In part one of the MinNASA project, we talked about preparing the minimum OSD for connection to the NASA M light. First thing we did was solder the two jumpers, one on the front of the board and one on the back of the board in order to pass the 5 volts from the first stage to the second stage. And then we went and cut the etch to separate the 12 volts from the video from the second stage of the Minim OSD. Next we went to the MinNASA Wiki and downloaded the firmware and the config tool. Then we connected the Minim OSD to the FTDI card and then to the USB port and uploaded the firmware to the Minim OSD and configured the panels of the Minim OSD. In part two of the Min NASA OSD project, we showed how we could connect the GPS directly to the Minim OSD without the NASA. Then we tested this on the screen to show what information we got. Then we took it outside and got six satellites and showed how additional information was shown for the GPS. We opened up the NASA and studied the connections for the GPS, then soldered a servo lead onto the pins to connect to the Minim OSD and tested that. Next, we're going to be doing the insane soldering and wiring that's needed to get the extra features for the Min NASA. I'm doing a little practicing here on an old circuit board that I got, and I've got the smallest solder I can find, and I've also got some uh, very small wire wrap wire. Both of these came from Radio Shack. And then I specially ordered a very small 1 64th of an inch tip for my soldering iron. And I've been cranking the soldering iron up to like 700 degrees just to make sure the tip is hot enough instead of the usual 600. I manufactured myself a eye loop on a set of glasses. So I got like a three power eye loop and two power magnifying glasses. I guess that gives me about six power. I'm just doing everything I can do to give me the advantage I need and uh, I'm holding the wires down or been holding the wires down with some duct tape while I solder them and you can see if the camera will focus here that I've got a couple wires soldered on here but unfortunately they're shorted I tried my best but with that technique I was still having trouble I went with my 5 power eye loop on top of a 2 power magnification glasses and so that gives me about 10 power. And that was a little bit better. So the basic trick I used besides uh, tinning the wire was to put the tip right on the knee of the pin right there. Let it heat up the pin and then draw the solder into the lead like that and then remove the iron. Okay, here's what I'm seeing through my eye loop when I'm soldering. I got the eye loop against the camera with my glasses and everything and uh, this is basically what I'm seeing. And two of them got bridged and then I used my solder sucker to try to draw off the solder and when I did it came unbridged and it actually looks pretty good so I got all three wires right next to each other now. But I've been working on this for hours. I mean, this is something I would never want to do again. I've went ahead and put some welder's glue on top of the wires right there to protect them and just letting that dry. There's usually eight wires that you can connect, but I'm not going to be using the RSSI because my receiver doesn't have RSSI and uh, I'm not going to be having a current sensor either, so I don't need the current. I might be able to make the voltage work so I kept that wire. So I've got only six wires instead of eight wires. So what I figured I could do is just take this six pin header here to solder my six wires to. The pin header is now epoxy to the top of the original pin header and next we're going to solder the six wires onto the back of the pin header. Okay so I have all the wires soldered on now and uh, the first pin here is the gimbal F1 and the second pin is the gimbal F2. That's these two. And then I have the uh, screen switch and the throttle on the third and fourth pin. So that's these two here. And then I have the LED adapter uh, right here. That's the status of the LED adapter. That's on the fifth pin which is this setup. And the last one is the voltage 
which is the sixth pin and that's over here so two rows of pins we have the original row from the minimum OSD and then we got the top row for the enhancements alright let's now test it alright I have the two gimbal inputs hooked up right now from uh, F1 and F2 to see if I could get my artificial horizon and what I actually have is just a bunch of X, Y, Z, Z, W. I had to update the character set to get the uh, artificial horizon to look right. And uh, in order to do that, I had to actually go to the UBX firmware so I could get the right baud rate to upload the character set. And then I had to go back to the DJI firmware. And uh, everything was good after that. And now I just need to calibrate the NASA to get the artificial horizon to be level. Okay, after turning the gimbal switch on in the DJI software, I actually got it working. It turned out it wasn't even turned on, so that's what the problem was. I had to configure it in the NASA software. Alright, let's go and check the voltage input. So that's this pin on the end here, represented by this diagram right here. And we've already checked F1 and F2 to get the uh, artificial horizon, so now I'm checking the voltage. Now, the voltage, according to their diagram, uses a resistor divider like this with a 4.7K and a 10K. But uh, this is supposed to go to a voltage and current sensor, which I don't have, so I'm kind of just making my own voltage sensor. And what I had to do is increase the divider to knock the voltage down even more. So what I actually have is a 47K and a 680K. And this is what it looks like, and I've got it hooked up to the battery. Let's pretend this is my flight battery. It's a 3-cell. So I'm measuring the voltage here, and then I have it plugged into the LED module here, running the NASA and the Minim OSD. And here's what we have on the screen, and you can see I've got a little over 12 volts which is about right for that battery. Okay next we're gonna check the lead status which is right here this third pin and I have a wire hooked up to the third pin on here and also a wire to ground and normally these wires would go to a resistor uh, matrix that would look like this that would get uh, different level voltages from the three pins of the lead adapter. Well, I haven't made that, but I can still show you how the pin would work and test it. So if you look on the screen, right here, you'll see a little icon. That is actually the lead status. So I'm touching these pins together just like this, and you can see the lead status changing there. So that appears to be working. I just haven't made the little plug for uh, to tap into the lead module yet. But that's all on the wiki for anyone that wants to do it. Alright, now we're going to test the screen switch, which is the fifth pin right here, which is represented by this one that says screen switch. And what I've done is I've bound my 8 channel receiver here to my radio and hooked a wire from the uh, channel 7 which is aux 2 this three position switch on my radio and then run that servo wire over to that uh, fifth pin so now let's test it out 0 1 and 2 so that's how that works and I was kind of surprised that all you had to do was just hook a servo lead up to it. Okay, now we're testing the throttle, which is the uh, fourth pin here <clears throat> in my diagram. And this is equally easy. All I did was hooked up a splitter servo lead that splits off from the first channel on my uh, receiver to the third channel on the NASA for the uh, throttle and then also goes over here to the minimum OSD. So <clears throat> the throttle channel, first channel here on my receiver is going to both units 
the Manaza and the Minimo SD. And it was just a simple hookup. Now when I'm hooking these cables up here, I'm actually only using just the signal pin. Uh, the red and the brown aren't even being used because uh, there's already a ground supplied. Uh, through, so I don't need that. Eventually I'll probably just have a single wire because that's all I'll need for each one. Okay, so the throttle is down here in the corner where it says THR. There we go, that's 100% all the way up. And then as we come down, and that's about halfway. And then all the way down. So, appears to be working. Now, so in conclusion, the wires that I have here, as I said, are overkill. I only need just the yellow wire. I don't need the voltage of the ground because that's already being supplied to the minimum OSD by the NASA. And uh, I was using this R800X uh, Spectrum compatible receiver from Hobby King. It's an 8 channel and my DX8 radio. But you can use any receiver and radio combination you want. So it's not limited to just Spectrum. So have at it. So this project looks like it's very, very difficult to do all that little wiring, but it does work. And uh, all I can say is uh, don't send me orders because I don't want to make any more of these. This is just really insane wiring. It's only for those who've got a lot of time and uh, just want to convert their NASA M Lite to an OSD compatible board like this. Um, as I've said before, I think you're better off just getting the upgraded NASA, maybe the V2 or something, so that you can hook an OSD directly to it. It's probably a better route to go. It'll cost a little more money, but it's a whole lot easier. So that's it for now, and that concludes the three-part series on the Min NASA project. So now we just need to figure out how to get the Min NASA system mounted on the quadcopter.